controversies associated with that office during those times as there is now. Many, many. Dharamlal is one of the most egregious. Right? Not to charge. And there are several others. Talking about the president, um, the current president, 19 fraud charges discontinued. The attorney general discontinued. Ashni Singh, Brassington, all of these things discontinued. And, and, and on the one hand, while you're discontinuing on that one side, you are recommended charges against certain other people when there's absolutely no evidence. And can we hear James Singh, Minister Lopez and Ben of Security, and Guyana Police Force heads claiming that they don't have any information and they have no knowledge of this cocaine and who it belonged to and where it's going and where it's coming from? Members of the Constitution um, intended for somebody to just arbitrarily say stop this matter and the matter stopped. I would have thought that the framers would have expected some explanation. The federal prosecutors told the Belgian media that the estimated street value of the drug load is around 900 million pounds, which is US $1.59 billion. As to why this particular action is taken, and in some cases why a particular action is not taken, that is, I, that is, that is my view. That is why these things have to be challenged. What about the director of public prosecution? That racial, that racial, racial, racial woman. That politically corrupt woman. Shalimar Hak. And let me tell you this. I joined the force in 1973. I retired in 2010. There about several directors of public prosecution. I remember when I joined, it might have been Emmanuel Ramon. Um, you had, for some time, Chan. How come critics were always cussing people, embarrassing them, use an, an equipment and a platform, social media platform or a communication device to threaten and embarrass people? How come he didn't get charged yet? A Shalimar hat? Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. This is not an isolated case. This is not an isolated case where this person is charged or persons of a certain religious persuasion are charged and then you hear that the matter um, is discontinued. You're hearing that the, these matters are discontinued. I'm saying... That it is time that these things are challenged. I will hope that some liar or a group of liars will take up these things. That is the only way the law can evolve. To sit there quietly and accept these things is not going to work. If, if that matter wasn't challenged, the Marcus Bistrom matter wasn't challenged all the way to the CCJ, you would not have had this evolution that has taken place with this particular section of the Criminal Law Procedure Act. You would not have had that. And therefore, it behoves the legal uh, fraternity to challenge these things and let's get proper ruling as to how this, um, even, even you know, the, 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 letter, the letter of the constitution says that she can. I don't think that that is the spirit, and this is from a layman. I don't think the spirit of the, 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 the writers or the framers of the constitution um, intended for somebody to just arbitrarily say, stop this matter, and the matter stopped. I would have thought that the framers would have expected some explanation as to why this particular action is taken and in some case why a particular action is not taken. That is why, that is that is my view. That is why these things have to be challenged. These things have to be challenged. And I hope that these liars, I don't call the name, but I know they listen. And if they don't listen, I know people will tell them. I know people will tell them. And you all got to find some backbone and make sure these things are challenged. These things are, are occurring too frequently. And let me tell you this. I joined the force in 1973. I retired in 2010. There about several directors of public prosecution. I remember when I joined, it might have been Emmanuel Ramon. Um, you had, for some time, Chan. You had George Jackman. You had um, Bisma Anamon. You had, I think, the same current Chief Justice Act. Uh, acting George 
You had all of these people sitting in that same office. And I can never recall, I have not, I can't recall the amount of controversies associated with that office during those times as there is now. Many, many. Dharmlal is one of the most egregious. Right? Not to charge. And there are several others. Talking about the president, um, the current president, 19 fraud charges discontinued. The attorney general discontinued. Ashni Singh. Brassington, all of these things discontinued. And, and and on the one hand, while you're discontinuing on that one side, you are recommending charges against certain other people when there's absolutely no evidence. And it's not me saying so. It's a court have been saying that in in this on December the 27th last, the magistrate in court three made the made the point when she dismissed the charge of conspiracy to commit fraud, that there was, she said, to use her word, there was not an iota of evidence against the defendants, of which I was one, not an iota. There are matters that went to the, I quote all the way to the, I quote, and judges have remarked that there's no evidence in this case. And in the case I referenced, uh, there was this charge on the 27th of December, a lawyer who represented some of the uh, defendants had to remark publicly that he cannot understand that anyone who had any type of legal training would have seen that file and recommended criminal charge. This office is so controversial now. The office of the DPP I'm talking about, and I'm talking about the office because you have the DPP and you have several um, officers there uh, with her. Well, none of them have seen these things. Nobody can say nothing. Kawai GT is a place with enough big buy. And once you call a big buy up on the phone, or once you could get big buy up on the phone, and you got a link, everybody in Guyana got a link. You know this, uh, right? Everybody in Guyana got a link. And he had a link, and that's why he ended up out and able to make moves and do his thing. Money pass, whatever the situation is, allegedly. But it's not the first time, it's not the last time, right? And it definitely in the only time that we're hearing about something like this. This situation going on over and over again, over and over again in GT. And look, the most they can say, look, the most they could do is just talk. They can't do nothing about it. But guess what? The power is in the people. The power is in the people. The power is in the people, GT. The power is in the people, Guyanese, in the diaspora and all over the world. The power is in our hands to make sure that things like this can't go on no more. No more corruption in high places. Boost this video in the algorithm so that people can see it all over the world. Boost this video so that like-minded persons that can do things to make real changes, Guyanese. Why? Because we're the ones that are going to do something about it. And people need to see and know that things like this is going on. Because guess what? This might end up being just another thing that is brushed under the rug. That is just left alone. That persons no longer talk about because something else is going on. But how long are we going to continue going on like this? And look, there's more people talking more things and showing even greater implications of how corruption in a country could lead to even bigger things going on. Bigger things like the biggest drug ring ever, like the biggest drug bust ever. No Guyana being labeled as the land of island powder. And then just talking about when we celebrate in Pagua. We can hear directly from Dr. Chedi on these matters. He has some more information for tell me about what's going on allegedly in the DPP office. Let me hear what's going on. If you haven't already, do remember to hit that subscription button so that you could stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. One love. So this cocaine that's shipping from Guyana in rice, cocaine shipping from Guyana to Belgium in rice, the Belgian prosecutors got all the information. They know who the cocaine belongs to. They know who is the person who are handling the cocaine. They have the family 
an entire family known as the Aquino family who monitor, collect the cocaine and do everything for them. But Guyana government, Kanu head James Singh, Minister Lopes and Ben of Security, and Guyana police force heads claiming that they don't have any information and they have no knowledge of this cocaine and who it belongs to and where it's going and where it's coming from. But the Belgian prosecutors is telling you who it belongs to, who handling it, who clearing it from the ship, and everything. A fucked up fucking criminal, drug dealers and criminals. The police following a series of investigations, searches and arrests, the Belgian prosecutors dealt a serious blow to the recently disbanded drug gang led by the former chief Willie Michelin as they intercepted and unearthed the largest overseas drug bus in the world. The counter narcotic prosecutors said they had tracked the transatlantic journey of 11.5 tons of cocaine from a port in Guyana and seized it upon arrival at the port of Antwerp. The federal prosecutors told the Belgian media that the estimated street value of the drug load is around 900 million pounds, which is US 1.59 billion dollar. This is how much cocaine government officials involved in smuggling from Guyana to Belgium. The entire country bought it for a year. This with the cocaine equivalent to. Let's go. They went straight to the exact container and said, "This container right here. This one come from Guyana. This is it. This got in the tons of cocaine. Open it. When they open the container, there is a container of cocaine in the container. That container was scanned by government workers at GRA." And that information was hid away by senior government officer, the lady, who ain't gone to jail. She's supposed to go and get charged and go to jail. But at the same time, the Ministry of Security in Guyana claiming they got no information. The head of Kanu, James Singh, claiming they got no information. The former police commissioner, now this police commissioner, them ain't got no information and they can't do no investigation. What about the director of public prosecution? That racial, that racial, racial, racial woman. That politically corrupt woman. Shalimar Hack. Oh, you could sleep at night, Shalimar Hack. You're a Muslim. You call yourself a Muslim? Yeah? What do you do for remiss all these sins? Do you give arms? How often do you give arms, Charlie Marha? How do you remiss all these atrocities, these sins that you're committing? Charging black people in the Cooperative Republic of Guyana with false charges. Yeah? Issuing recommendation for charges and arrest of black people in Guyana. Why Darren Mladen gone to jail for raping and buggering a little girl? Eh, Charlie Marak? Why Darren Mladen get charged for abusive language in parliament telling people the one they'll do? How come critic who always cussing people and embarrassing them use an, an equipment and a platform, social media platform or a communication device to threaten and embarrass people? How come he ain't get charged yet? Ashali Marha? 100% wildcrafted CMOS from nature by natives. Why pay more? This all stems. In my opinion, they start the loads of investigations going on. They pull in a permanent secretary from Ministry of Home Affairs. Home Affairs are in charge of the police. Pull her in for questioning, you know I me. Mean? I don't know what she told them. 
I don't know if she gave up any names, confirmed any uh, uh, the suspicions that they have and those things like that. And they are now working. And, and the Americans are good at this, you know what I mean? They don't pull your visa until they get what you want from you. 